John, we're going to continue along here with this discussion. The word recession has been thrown around a lot lately, putting many investors on edge. Uh, but as Dom was just talking about, could that lead to a self-fulfilling prophecy? Joining us to discuss investor sentiment, uh, Bob Schiller, professor of economics at Yale University, co-founder of the uh, Case Schiller Index and a uh, Nobel laureate, actually one that, that deserved a, a Nobel. Um, he also has a new book coming out about how viral stories could drive major economic events called narrative economics. Also joining us, um, still in the running for, for his Nobel, uh, CNBC senior uh, markets commentator. One of the undeserved ones. Mike Santelli, yeah. for, for one of the, <laughs> there are many uh, of those. So, you know, Bob, when, when we've talked over the years so many times, um, one, we remember you for a lot of things, but one thing that I always think about uh, with you is, is animal spirits and how important animal spirits are uh, to everything. I mean, sometimes I think animal spirits are more important than the underlying fundamentals. And, and this is what we're talking about right here, whether we're going right. to dampen, uh, are we dampening, are we uh, dampening un underlying animal spirits with, with all this talk about a recession? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Read my mind. Uh, I think it's always been that way. Uh, although it became clear, especially during the Great Depression. Remember Roosevelt, the only, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Keynes t jumped on this. I wrote a book entitled Animal Spirits with George Akerlof. Uh, it's absolutely a driving force. Uh, and economists don't seem to be, I think they're coming around now with new digitized data and things like Google Trends. We, we see more and more concrete evidence of this. Makes, uh, <laughs> makes economics a, a, a tough pursuit uh, in terms of a hard science when so much is based on emotion and animal spirits of, of crowds and, and individuals. Uh, yes, that's another. Uh, Alfred Marshall, a hundred years ago, said economics is not an exact science. So when someone tells you that as a leading indicator has reliably predicted recessions, don't believe it. Well, I will say one thing that you're kind of out of mainstream thinking on now is, is whether the Fed is behind the curve in terms of, of lowering rates. You think they should have actually not cut last time. You think they should have hiked last time. Well, the important thing is the, uh, uh, the narrative that they're beginning. So when they saw the rate cut the first time in years, uh, the 25 basis points doesn't mean that much. It's more that they launched a new regime and that they are worried about a recession. Uh, and in the past, you know, the Fed can, tends to make more and more rate cuts afterwards, although this time their commentary suggested not. But still, uh, I think that there is a, a problem with cutting rates because it shows a sense of alarm. It's like when your doctor suddenly gives you a penicillin, you think, oh, my gosh, I'm really sick. Or, yeah pay my bill really quickly or something like that. Yeah, that, 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 gets, you, uh, that, gets, that, that gets you thinking. Um, Santoli, Animal Spears, yeah. I mean, saying that the Fed cutting uh, sort of dampens sentiment is saying the same thing, that you can hurt animal spirits. And it's interesting the way that uh, Jay Powell, Fed chairman, tried to characterize what they did, right? He said, well, we think this is a mid-cycle adjustment. Now, you can look back to right. a couple times in the 90s when it did seem as if there were a mid-cycle adjustment that happened and it was very constructive and we didn't go into recession and the markets took it very well eventually. The problem is, in 1995, they weren't calling it a mid-cycle adjustment as they did it. It seemed as if they were preventing a recession that was theoretically possible. So it's almost as if the market wants the Fed, if they're going to be in this right. mode of cutting, they want it to be kind of, look, this is an easing cycle until we see otherwise. So I do think that that's why it becomes a delicate process. You, you think it's by simply not saying I have a bazooka that I could pull out and use if I needed to, that it becomes less effective of a rate cut? Uh, I think it becomes yeah. less effective in terms of how the market kind of digests that and decides to proceed from there. Now, that being said, I mean, you are going to have multiple false recession alarms go off before you get to the actual. This is what the late cycle uh, kind of dynamic always looks and feels like. So I don't think it's necessarily unique in this time. I also think there's a difference, there's an absolute difference in the public mind what a recession is and what economists define as a technical recession. I mean, if you ask the public, they felt we were in a recession till 2011, 2012, right. when it ended, you know, in 2010. Bob? 
Well, yeah, the word recession means getting worse, uh, according to the NBER. But, you know, we, we had to have slow recoveries, and so I think the public has a different meaning for recession. About uh, interest rate cuts, another example of uh, the psychological impact of these cuts is when the Fed cut interest rates to the, uh, in, right after the financial crisis, to the zero to 25 basis point range. Uh, you know what that did? By cutting them and mentioning the word zero, it put us into the same category as Japan during the last decade. I think they shouldn't have cut it to zero. They should have left it above zero, a little bit above. You don't want to use that zero, the Z word. You don't want to do that because it scares people. So, Bob, um, you know, you don't think inflation at this point is is much below target. So that 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 argument that we have room to cut that doesn't hold water with you. You think we're pretty close to where we should be, and the and the economy is running pretty hot. So it's crazy to to be talking about cuts. Yeah, uh, that's what I had been thinking when I said this before. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Changed. We're actually pretty much a success uh, with uh, inflation. It's been close to the 2% target. Uh, and uh, I don't think I wanted to stir the waters right then. I mean, the interesting thing is that, you know, I said this before, the economy is producing roughly as much inflation now as it was when rates were below 1% on the short end. So in other words, it's not as if there's a low inflation emergency that the Fed has to respond to. The argument simply is, Look, with inflation this low, you can afford to cut rates a little bit uh, to, to maybe can... boost growth a bit in the, in the short term. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, our Fed people are pretty sensible generalists, and there's a bit of behavioral finance in their thinking. They must be aware that the public looks at the news and reacts to that uh, more than they re react to a 25 basis point change in rates. All right. I mean, you could have gone into physics, uh, Professor. You know what I mean? You didn't have to do this, I, right? I mean, the things that, of course, That's are... Called, yeah, in fact, economists love physics. It's called physics envy. Yeah. Uh, I was it. there, too. Physics envy. I, 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 I definitely agree with that. If I were an economist, I'd like, give me something that I, that I can believe in. And, 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 and I'm well, sorry, but yeah. there's nothing. There's, there's well, nothing. finance is attractive to people who like physics, I think. <laughs> Physicists sometimes come this way. It's something about finance is so precise. Yeah. Uh, and you've got okay, precise data minute by minute. Then I think about chemistry, of course. You never know really where the electron is. You've got an idea somewhere it might be. <laughs> anyway, the whole thing, it's all too. Maybe molecular biology is pretty clear cut. Yeah, that hasn't changed very much. But if you talk about theoretical physics, it's pretty much storytelling once you get to the far extremes of it. Right. <laughs> and, and light is a wave and a particle. Explain that to me. All right. If, that, uh, but we digress. Thank you, Professor. We, uh, we always love right, having you on. And, uh, nice to see I, you. I don't, uh, I'm not optimistic about that. What about a Pulitzer or something? Emmy, maybe an Emmy, but well, the Nobel is look, looking bleak right now.